This particular painting is of a garden scene. It's in springtime and uh, it's one of those ideal, beautiful situations where any landscape artist is spoiled for choice. So I've had to choose a composition out of many potential painting subjects at this particular venue. So I'm going to take you through the typical painting process which you are familiar with and uh, look at specific decisions that are made with regard to uh, color, composition and uh, the way the painting has been structured. And we get to the final result and hopefully you can see a bit more of my thinking as I go through and make change, changes, um, try to correct mistakes and things like that. And uh, you can get a feeling for how the um, a painting evolves each time. It's slightly different, but uh, with practice, these steps, and particularly what you can do when you reach a block or something is not going the right way, how you can come back and correct, and then hopefully finish off the way you intended to. So let's begin. Right, this is the scene that I'm working from and as you can see, a beautiful subject. I'm going to be making the garden bench the focal point. The idea is to lead the eye to that focal point with the uh, kind of the triangle of the um, flowers in the foreground. If you look at it as a mass shape, the pathway showing through as a source of light also leading the eye to the focal point and then the nice bright uh, green grass against the dark hedge and then in the background some uh, points of interest and also a, a few darks there as well. In essence this is a painting about the light, the contrast between warm and cool and light and dark forming the main subject. The colors that I'm using are fairly typical palette for me. One or two uh, extra colors like thalo green to make um, the nice darks here and there. I've got uh, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, the yellows. I've got uh, a cool cadmium lemon and a warmer uh, cadmium yellow deep and uh, two reds, one slightly warmer than the other. as a crimson lake and a cadmium red light, then yellow ochre and burnt sienna and of course titanium white and a bit of alizarin crimson as well. Starting off with um, a notan sketch and also a, a little composition line drawing as well to uh, help settle the idea in my mind. The mass shapes are pretty clear in the notan study and they are really helpful to remind me of where the path of the eye will be following and following the light and dark uh, counter change between the shapes as well. I'm using a Belgian linen canvas 40 by 40 centimeters and it's been primed with gesso and uh, a coat of um, red acrylic paint to tone it. This is mainly because I like having a good um, bit of red underneath the greens that I'm going to be painting over. So the red and green complementary relationship, the red kind of helps to just calm the greens down a bit now and then. And also when the red shows through here and there, it's a nice effect as well and, and uh, add something to the painting. Then always add the horizon line. This is particularly helpful. It's an important element because all the shapes in the painting pretty much relate to where they are in relation to that horizon line. So it's particularly helpful to place the uh, shapes as you start. The first main shape that you start the painting on in relation to the horizon is very important because it has a knock-on effect and everything else relates to that first shape. The horizon helps you place that first shape as well but you have to still be careful that you get the shape in the correct position. Now I start uh, blocking in. 
I'm using ultramarine, a bit of phthalo green as well, and alizarin crimson to get a nice dark. And uh, very loosely putting in the dark mass shapes as I see them in the reference. I've then taken a rag and I've marked out a few uh, spaces in the foreground shape where the flowers are going to go and particularly the large flower shapes that I'm going to be putting in. So just um, using a rag to reduce the um, mixing that's going to happen when I bring the light colors in. Then I'm going into the middle values. The most of this painting is in fact um, middle values. So uh, I thought I could cover more ground right in the beginning by getting the middle values in uh, using the greens, predominantly yellow greens, and brushing those in. And you will see the remaining areas pretty much where the lights are going to go. But next up, I'm starting to put in the heads of the daisies. I'm starting off with um, what might look like uh, a bright white, but that's simply in contrast to the darks that are there. In fact, the whites that I'm putting down are pretty cool. There's a bit of blue mixed in, even a touch of alizarin here and there for a slightly violet tint. And this is because most of these flowers are in the shade to begin with. Certain parts of them are going to be highlighted with sunlight, of course, later on. But those warm, bright colors or highlights are going to really work nicely against the cool bluish tinged white and uh, violet tinged white colors. So all of these still middle values and we're still reserving the lights. Now starting to bring in the lightest lights and uh, this will develop but you can already see how the light is coming in from um, the right to left and is going to be forming a shape that um, roughly is going to follow the idea of the Z shape taking your eye into the painting. Although that hasn't been fully described yet, but uh, that's the intention. Now bringing in the pathway and you can see now a diagonal starting to develop from the right leading towards the bench. I've simply drawn in the bench very loosely kind of dragging the uh, thick paint from the brush to make the slats of the bench, um, in effect scumbling them. I'm not trying to draw the bench with any accuracy. I don't want the edges too hard. Um, the bench really is in bright sunlight for the most part and there's a lot of reflections and, and light vaporous type of look as well that hopefully comes through. So you can see a bit of a diagonal forming from the path towards the bench. Also starting to add in some details at the back. And I'm actually quite taken with those details, especially the interesting colors in the palm trees at the back, those pinkish and bluish violets. So I might uh, regret it a bit later when I consider the final painting as having a little too much detail in the background, but um, We'll see how it goes from there. And continuing with developing the shapes in the background, um, a few more details than perhaps are necessary. I could have left out a few of the trees maybe, um, but I think if I can achieve some interest throughout the painting and have you pause here and there to have a look at what's going on, then that's not such a bad thing. All right, now working into the flowers a bit more in the foreground, bringing in a, a few light shapes here and there. Still considering how things are going, mostly my approach is just to work the whole painting. If I'm working in the background areas, then I will move to the foreground. And this way I keep a, a sort of a balance going through the painting. Bringing in a bit thicker paint, in the uh, grass, sunlit grass, next to the path and leading to the bench. There's going to be quite a lot of thickish paint in the path and that middle area. The foreground, being mostly in shadow, will be kept relatively thin. 
except of course when I get into the impasto paint on the flowers towards the end. And now quite a jump in information. I've moved a few more flowers into the picture as well, noting in the reference that they overlap parts of the focal area of the bench and also the hedge on the right. And I'm also bringing in some nice uh, sunlit light browns, burnt siennas into the pathway as well. And that reddish element in the path colors forms a nice counterpoint to the greens. In the background, I've developed the shapes further as well, brought in a few impasto touches of um, highlights already. I'm using a palette knife, just dabbing the palette knife lightly and getting those thicker colors. I've noticed that um, I needed to bring in and restore some of the darks in the foreground. You'll notice in the previous uh, slide the, the diagonal from bottom right towards the bench had disappeared a bit and I needed to bring in those darks. And this is a typical thing that happens in the middle stages of a painting. You find that some of your darks have disappeared and you need to restore those darks because they are so important. And then I've thickened up the paint in the middle area, that's the sunlit grass in front of the hedge, consolidating the path shape a little more as well, and bringing a few of those touches of burnt sienna and yellow ochre into the uh, rest of the painting to kind of tie all of those elements up. Now, the flowers are starting to get more attention, starting to develop the light areas, painting over the middle cool colors of those flowers. The background is pretty much completed and we're getting towards the end of the painting now. I think the composition of the uh, diagonals is now nicely established. The eye does move in to the bench, pauses there a bit, moves into the background and I think we come pulled back in to the hedge area and into the foreground. The bench is fairly well defined, at least we know what it is, I think. And uh, there's some variety in the flowers, some uh, prominent flowers in the foreground and then a few others suggested. You don't have to paint each one accurately. I certainly haven't, but I think it's pretty clear that there are daisies and uh, there's a good variety of cool and warm colors. I've also brought in more of the foliage of the daisies, being a lot of cool greens and a few violet shaded green as well. And of course, the touches of yellow and orange in the center of each uh, of those daisies. And the painting completed and I think uh, overall, I was quite happy with the result. It is a, perhaps a bit on the busy side. Maybe I got carried away with the background. It is one of those things. I think uh, I got so caught up with that. So maybe next time I will turn the background down a bit more. But overall, I'm happy with the result and I think it is interesting. It is filled with light, all sorts of colors, and overall, um, the painting will certainly convey the spring morning that I was trying to capture. Mm -hmm.